Now I don't have a hot cocoa recipe to call my own, but I do want one. But before I ever teach a thing, I have to become the student first. So today we're going to explore a few very popular styles of hot chocolates from around the world. And we're going to learn from them and then I'm gonna show you how I approach the act of making a recipe that I call my own. So here's my guide to hot cocoa. So let's just jump right into it. Today we're gonna to go over four styles of cocoa and the first is gonna be American hot cocoa, most notably Swiss Miss, which is a brand invented by Charles Sana and sold by Conagra Foods. It's an American company, not a Swiss company. It is to hot cocoa what Betty Crocker is to boxed cakes and brownies. It's pre-made and all you gotta do is add hot milk and stir. I always love the mini marshmallows. It's this sort of dehydrated marshmallow that's the same kind of thing you'd find in a Lucky Charms. It's got the nostalgic look and smell. It's very thin. It's kind of got this like purpley chocolatey color that to me it reminds me more of like a hot chocolate milk. And there's a really just not enough marshmallows, not nearly enough. I remember getting a separate whole package of marshmallows as a kid. And now there's like five in there that are like dissolving. So, eh. I'll tell you right now, it ain't bad. Better than I remember, I wish there were more marshmallows. Now you can also find some higher quality cocoa mixes available in stores like this one that uses two types of Dutch cocoa. It comes with the sugars added, everything's already added and you usually just have to add some hot milk. That's American style. But for me, I'm looking to use some real chocolate over here. So we're gonna give a pass on the powdered based style. Next we're moving on to chocolat chou or French hot chocolate. Start the same with a cup or two of whole milk. A French hot cocoa though uses at least 70% bittersweet chocolate. Then we're gonna add about three ounces of that chocolate per cup of milk. And the only other thing we're gonna add is a tablespoon of brown sugar per cup of milk along with some salt. Get the milk on the stove and bring it up just to below the boil again. I'm gonna take the chocolate, chop it up real fine so that it melts nice and easily. And by now the milk should be hot. I like to start adding everything once the milk gets just below the boil, around 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Once you see that milk foaming, that's sort of a good sign. And then we can add the chocolate. I can get the heat on low or turn it off completely and then add the sugar and the salt. If it's a little thin, you can let it cook on low heat until it reduces and thickens a little bit. And we can just whisk that for about two or three minutes until it's the consistency that you like. And then serve it up immediately. I also wanna test a few garnishes to see what makes sense. So I just grate some chocolate into a bowl. And then I take the glass I'm going to serve the hot cocoa in, just dip the rim in some of the cocoa and then roll it in those chocolate shavings. Initially it looked really nice, but as you'll see, as soon as you add a hot liquid to it, this plan falls apart quickly. And as you can see, it's a much thicker cocoa. It's got a much more chocolatey look to it. I'm excited to try this one, but as you can see, that chocolate rim started to melt, so I just covered it in powdered sugar and gave it a try. I believe this would go amazingly with a croissant. This one I really mm. love. It's a little thicker, it's much more chocolatey. It's not too sweet. It has this like luscious mouthfeel. It's just velvet along the tongue. It's reminding me of something nostalgic, but I can't figure it out. It sort of reminds me of like when you have a brownie that is underbaked in the center and is almost gooey. It's like drinking that flavor. It's pretty amazing. And as it cools, it just gets a little thicker, but it's still very drinkable. No cocoa powder in this, and you didn't need it really. Mm. Really good stuff. But next we're heading on to Italy to make their version of hot cocoa, Chocolata Calda. For this recipe, we're gonna use one cup of whole milk and we're gonna add all but a quarter cup of it to the pan and get that onto the stove and get that hot. Then we got a couple tablespoons of Dutch processed cocoa powder, sift that into a bowl, along with a tablespoon of powdered sugar and a tablespoon of cornstarch, both sifted into the bowl. And we're gonna use three ounces of chocolate. Half of it's gonna be that 70% cocoa we used for the French hot chocolate, a 66% semi-sweet cocoa to see what the different flavor is like. We're gonna chop that up fine. So we're gonna get those that chopped up chocolate into the bowl and this is where the recipe deviates a little bit. We're gonna take that milk and that cocoa powder mixture and we're gonna make a slurry out of it so that when we add it to the milk, it's going to act as a thickening agent and this Italian hot chocolate is gonna be a much thicker version of hot chocolate than the other versions of hot chocolate we're gonna be making today. We're also gonna need a little bit of whipped cream for this recipe, so I'm gonna add a little bit of heavy cream along with some maple syrup and just whip that into soft peaks. Now again, once that milk is hot and nice and foamy, then we can add that chocolate slurry to the mix. 
and we want to get that incorporated. Raise the heat up slightly and you really do want to bring this up to just about the boil to activate those starches. And once you see it sort of bubbling or on the edges, then you can add the chocolate pieces and then whisk that until the cocoa has substantially thickened. It's going to be sort of closer to like a pudding than a drink. And then serve it immediately in the mug with some of that whipped cream. In Italy, it's often eaten with a spoon or maybe with a little piece of brioche. You have the hot chocolate and the cold whipped cream. I like the contrast. I'm more of a whipped cream guy than a marshmallow guy. Drinkability though, takes a hit. The addition of a cornstarch or some sort of starch to thicken it, I don't think is my bag. Very delicious nonetheless. Next, we're gonna move on to Mexican hot chocolate. Mexican hot chocolate was the first hot chocolate. Aztecs and Mayans were the first one to turn chocolate into a drink. And they had some specialized ingredients like a pure sugar cane, which is called pilencion, I think, and it's hard to find. So I'm gonna use brown sugar. I got a cinnamon stick, and then I have this Mexican chocolate. A lot of the hot cocos used 100% cocoa, but I hold on to these for my chili. I got it on Amazon and I got some options I can choose here, right? Maybe you want some chili in your hot chocolate. You got cinnamon. Coffee's really interesting. I think coffee would go really well in a hot chocolate. What I'm gonna use is use the cinnamon stick, so I'm not gonna use the cinnamon chocolate. I think I'm gonna add half the vanilla and half coffee. And just see what that goes. Now this is Mexican style chocolate. This doesn't mean it was Mexican chocolate. A lot of the cocoa beans are from Africa and they call it a Mexican style chocolate based on using a molino, which is a Mexican stone mill and they kind of puree the cocoa into a paste using one of these. And as you can see, the Mexican chocolate has like, you can see these little grains of spices. There's like a coarse sugar runs throughout this. So that's why you can control it by the amount of sugar you additionally add to it. So you don't want to go too crazy depending on how much sugar you like. That's why you got to know what chocolate you're using. Because if you're not using this chocolate, you're going to need to add a little bit more sugar. So just keep that in mind. The ingredients are a variable. So now I'm going to add the milk, but I want to keep this Pyrex measuring cup. Ah, uh, for God's sakes. I gotta call Pyrex and tell them all their products don't work. You wanna hold on to this because we're using this as what they call a chocolatera. And they had wooden whisks called molinilil, molinil, ah, I can't say that word. Molinililo. Ah, the molinilos. Molinilos. And they have these wooden whisks called molinilos. And they pour the hot chocolate in and they whisk the hot chocolate, they beat in air. To them it like signifies the oxygen they're beating in through the chocolate that they're then gonna consume through the body. So we're gonna hold this off to the side, throw in my cinnamon stick, and we're gonna get this onto the stove. Now we wanna bring that milk up to a gentle simmer and then once it's simmering, we wanna let it simmer for about 10 minutes to allow that cinnamon to really seep through. Then we wanna remove the cinnamon, we wanna add the sugar and add the chocolate. We don't need to add salt because it's in the chocolate. We wanna whisk that together until that chocolate is melted and then we're gonna to start to use the Molinillo technique which I finally learned how to pronounce properly. The same way survivalists would teach you how to start a fire in the woods, we're gonna use the whisk and roll it back between our hands to create a lot of foam and to beat a lot of air into the mixture. At the end of the day, I imagine you can use the whisk normally, but I like to understand the tradition. And then we're gonna pour it back into our Pyrex or our quote unquote chocolatera. And then we're gonna just repeat that same process, keep building that foam and that frothiness, almost in a similar way to like how a latte is made. The more you do it, obviously, the thicker and the foamier it will become, so that's up to you. And when you're done, drain the cocoa into the mug, serve with a cinnamon stick. And then let's give it a shot. Mmm. Very drinkable, light, airy, smooth, a bit different from the French. The French style was very velvety and rich, and this is almost on the opposite side of that spectrum, both equally satisfying. So some balance between this and the French is sort of what I'm going for. Now that we've kind of gone on a little journey of different styles of hot chocolates, 
from around the world. We can take those bits of learnings that we took from each of the things we liked and we can start to develop our own style, our own recipe for hot chocolate. The Mexican chocolate we used wasn't really my favorite. I actually really liked the combination of the 70% cacao bittersweet chocolate with the 66% semi-sweet chocolate. I'm going a 50-50 blend on that and I'm not using cocoa powder. I also know that I don't want it starch thickened. That's gonna take away from the drinkability and drinkability is something I'm looking for. I also want it to feel nostalgic. I want that classic childhood vibe when I have my hot chocolate. So I'm going with whipped cream. Outside of the Swiss Miss, whenever I ordered hot chocolate anywhere, it always came with whipped cream on top. And that was always the preferred topping for me. So I've got a canister that I've been keeping cold. Charge up that CO2. and that's gonna be a beautiful thing. Instead of the sugars, I'm gonna add a little bit of maple syrup. Just a tad, I like the flavor. It's also one of the most natural sweeteners you could use. If I wasn't gonna use this, I would use the light brown sugar. I'm gonna keep that hint of cinnamon, but I'm gonna toast it a little bit, bring it out a little bit more, so it's a little bit more pronounced. So I'm gonna try and go for like a French style hot chocolate vibe. I'm gonna apply the technique of the Molinillo to the hot chocolate to maybe bring out a little bit more of a lightness and an airiness. And then I'm gonna show you two variations that an adult might appreciate. One for the morning, using this Cometeer coffee. It's these frozen little pods. You see me do an ad on the show, and I really do love it. It's a product I actually use personally. One, we can toss a little bit of this in for a quick pick-me-up. And another variation is gonna be for the evening, using a little bit of Bailey's. How bad could that be? Let's get started. So I'm going with about two cups of whole milk, and that means I'm gonna need about six ounces of the chocolate, three ounces of this 66% semi-sweet chocolate, and then three ounces of this 70% bittersweet chocolate. Chopped fine with some salt added to it. I'm gonna measure out my milk, and then I'm gonna take the cinnamon stick and lightly toast it into the saucepan until it becomes aromatic. And then I can add the milk, bring that up to a simmer right below the boiling point and then let that simmer for about 10 minutes with the cinnamon stick in it so that that cinnamon flavor comes through. Then we're gonna add a tablespoon or two of the maple syrup and then fish out that cinnamon stick and then add the dark chocolates. Whisk those dark chocolates in until they're fully melted and then instead of using a whisk for the Molinillo technique, we're gonna use an immersion blender. We're just gonna hit that for two to three minutes, depending on how thick or foamy you like it, and it's really gonna do the job a lot faster. And then give it a taste, adjust the sweetness if needed, and then serve it up. Little whipped cream on top, little chocolate shavings, and there you have it. Mm. Mm. I'm happy with that. It's different. It's airy and light, but it still has a little bit of that velvetiness of the French style. It's kind of a mashup of them all. It's drinkable, it's not too sweet, and that whipped cream shot is the nostalgia it needs. Now what about variations? Say you need a little pick-me-up. You take a little espresso or maybe one of these comatier pods that I have, you add it right to a mug, pour some of that hot cocoa directly into it, give it a little stir maybe, a little whipped cream on top and some chocolate shavings, and you got a nice little pick-me-up. It's kind of like a reverse mocha frappuccino with some coffee ice cream. It's really nice. Or maybe you prefer a cocktail. Take one to one and a half ounces of some Bailey's ice cream, pour directly into the mug with some hot cocoa, some of that whipped cream, a little cinnamon stick, and those chocolate shavings. Just like that, you have a beautiful, nice after dinner boozy little cocktail. Now for all the recipes that I tried from around the world, as well as my version of hot chocolate, they'll all be in my holiday plan of attack that's gonna be linked down in the description for sale on my website. It's got all my holiday recipes in it, everything you'll need Need, along with exclusive holiday content that, you're, that is not on this channel that'll help you nail the holidays. That's all that I have today. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself and go feed yourself. For more holiday recipes, I got four more on the screen, including this beautiful roasted Chateau Brion with a port wine reduction sauce. That is a perfect thing to serve this Christmas.